All right, ready? No, my hair is all fucked up, to be honest with you. I don't know what's going on. There. I think that's a little better. All right, here we go. Five, four, nine, six. <laughs> Here I come, walking down the street, I get the funniest looks from everyone I meet, hey, I'm a monkey, think they're monkey around, don't sing and play, don't get a boot and blah. sandwich I made for you. Don't drink the coffee if coffee keeps you awake. It won't. Coffee never keeps me awake. Well, hello, sports fans. Yes, it's your trusty narrator here, Mr. Michael Nesmith. And uh, I used to be a monkey, but now I'm just funky. <laughs> anyway, hello again. Uh, this is a special episode that I wanted to do for my niece, who is having a birthday on April 7th. She'll be 26 years old. I won't embarrass her and name her name, but she knows who she is. Um, so this episode is a monkey's episode. And, well, let's, before we get into that, playing with, my, playing with my wires here. Hold on. Now that we have our sports microphone on, I think, we'll find out later. <laughs> Um, there was a band called the Beatles back in the 60s, and they were a big thing musically from England, came to America, big hit, and then they decided to make a movie to capitalize on the success. They made a movie called Hard Day's Night. They were running around being the Beatles improv kind of stuff, not really a script, just sequences and then they came later to do a color movie called help and it was between i think this time between hard days night and help that producers in america uh, tv be decided to create a show based on these four guys the mop tops because of the haircuts Let's make a show about an American band, a, ki a bunch of four kids, and they're trying to make it, but they're always failing, but they get into weird situations. Now comes Bob Rafelson, one of the producers. Bert Schneider was a producer. Um, and uh, there was a major director, not a major director, but a director who did a lot of the stuff, and he was good at the improv. I can't remember his name right now, sorry. Having a little bit of beer again. So these TV producers say, let's make a show about a bunch of guys trying to be in a band. And that show became The Monkees. And it came out in like summer of 66 or late early fall or something of 1966, which was only like two years uh, 
after the Beatles phenomenon, you know, had sort of peaked and also got dark when the the Beatles are bigger than Jesus bit happened and then they had a kind of a dark period. But nevertheless, the Monkees TV show comes about and the Beatles are still in the midst of their reign and their growing and rise. Suddenly the Monkees become a thing and their TV show lasted two seasons. The first season being this sort of strict uh, producer-led show with producer produced like major like Don Kirshner produced the music and a lot of TV execs were involved and scripts were tight but there was that improv thing and then later the second season got wilder there became a battle for control so in that battle there became a turmoil within the band and within the uh, group of actors as they were and the, what happened was there was a movie that was going to be developed to help promote the monkeys unfortunately as the movie was being produced I think this show got cancelled so then it was like an up in the air kind of thing with the with the band which wasn't really a band there were four guys that were hired to be a band uh, actors playing members of a band they wound up becoming a band and then they fought for the right to be a band. It was, listen, it was the sixties. All right. Everybody was kind of doing their own thing and trying to figure themselves out. But in any case, this movie became born. It's called head. And this movie is wild. It's crazy. Uh, it, um, I want to say that a lot of people think it's just out there and just like a bunch of nonsense going on at once and there's no plot or whatever but there is a little bit of a plot and I'll try to give that to you because when you see the movie you won't recognize that there's a plot but the main plot which is just the sequence the story which might might or might not have a conclusion or like a lot of stories actually it kind of goes sort of round and round you know a circle but this basic thing with this movie is that these monkeys are the actors who are in a show and they're also now in a band that they didn't know they were going to be in. And now they have to figure out how, how to deal with the show and being a band and being themselves. What happens is they take drugs probably mostly marijuana, but uh, I think it's going to be a lot of LSD too. And any, you know, uh, anything that, that heightens the senses to say. Um, and so the band is under the influence of this drug or these drugs. And they're basically going through their minds of how they're going to continue their career, or how they're going to move on from a movie studio to music or music to movies or back to TV. Uh, uh, the, the character of Victor Mature, Mature, as they say in the movie, you want a guy, is he represents, not God, he represents like a, an executive who's just flipping through channels, trying to figure out what the next big thing is. And he has this... Uh, uh, angst against the monkeys because they're trying to be like 60s, rebel. They're trying to do their own thing or, or open, uh, get influence. But he wants to be the executive that shuts things down. You know, and that's just a sketchy uh, na uh, narrative of the plot, but that's what it is. That's what's going on here. Is it, It's the monkeys thinking within themselves. They lock themselves into a room for I don't know how many days with Jack Nicholson, Bob Rafelson, uh, a couple other guys, and basically did what I just said. They took some drugs and they just stayed in this room. And I think Jack Nicholson had a audio cassette tape that he recorded what they were writing for the movie. They were basically talking out loud about what the movie should be. And so he is, as far as anybody knows, he's the only guy that has the cassette recording of that script. 
uh, audio script, if he even still has it, who knows. But anyway, for me, and listen, this whole movie is wild. It's crazy. Even for a 60s movie, it's just out there. There are some moments of The Monkey Show, which was a more, uh, you know, sort of tapered down version of what, you know, wildness the 60s was. Or the Beatles, even. And um, so there's a little bit of, there's some monkey stuff in there. And that's what I'm going to partially show you the best part on this is the monkey stuff, because most of it is just so out there that it doesn't, there's sketches. At the beginning, they're a band, they're trying to go out on stage, and send, and then they kind of hallucinate that they're going into a war scene where it's wild, it's loud, it's crazy, boom, loud noises. And then they eventually go out there and they play their song and then they move on. But that's what's going to happen. You're going to see sequences that almost don't seem connected, but they kind of are. And then by the end, of course, you're going to see it all connect. It's wild. And it's a great movie. It became a cult classic, actually. It's one that was hard to find. I never saw it when I was a kid myself. Uh, I always heard about it and I wanted to see it and it was just wasn't around. And it wasn't until I lived in L.A. after uh, starting college and they had a midnight theater uh, off the New Art Theater off of, uh, I don't know, somewhere in the uh, Westwood area. And that theater had a midnight showing with Frank Zappa, 2000 Motels, and it was double header with head monkeys. And that was the first time I ever saw the movie. And let me tell you, and I wasn't stoned or anything. I wasn't on any drugs. I wasn't drinking at the time, or I was drinking a little bit, but I wasn't smoking at the time. But uh, I saw it clean and was, you know, when you see it in the theaters, you're just blown away. So anyway, having talked 10 minutes about this thing, let's get started and let's show the clip. Let me start up my uh, computer. And Let's sync the sound in. I'm not going to set it up because the whole movie is kind of non sequitur, sort of. Uh, the song was pretty white. Well, so am I. What can I tell you? You've been working on your dancing, though. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, I've been rehearsing it. Glad you noticed that. Yeah, it doesn't leave much time for your music. You should spend more time on it because the youth of America depends on you to show the way. Yeah? Yeah. Monkeys is the craziest people. So this is an example sort of of the goofiness that the show could be. Oh, this is good. Look at that shot, right? Remember that shot. But just talking about Frank Zappa going away in the with the, the cow. He was a fan of the monkeys, actually, because he was interested in comedy and music and satire, really. Here we go. This weird box comes up. All right. All right. Come on out. Okay, wait a minute. <laughs> the cop. Come on. Out. Hey, why have you stop? I don't even want to hear why or what from you. Just out. Ow. Oh, well, sure. Anything you say. <laughs> out. Get out of here. Hey, what's going on? Well, move it. Out. Oh, hello, officer. Certainly glad to Come see on. you. Come on, all of you. Move it. Officer, we were only just trying to look. Try it. Out. <laughs> shut up. Sir, we, shut Ooh, up. He pushed him. Okay, weirdos. <laughs> Just what were you doing in there? And this better be straight. You. Fuzzy wuzzy. Uh, in the black. All right. I'm going to have to That's plug right. my what we were doing in there. Yeah. alter ego in First, here. First, uh... First it was, uh, we were in a factory. Yeah. Oh, and then there was a commercial thing. No, 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 no. It was a vacuum cleaner. Yeah, yeah vacuum, vacuum cleaner. cleaner. Right, right. Okay, boys. Let's go downtown. But, sir, we were just looking for David Jones. David Jones. Who's David Jones? Mike didn't have the hat in this by this time. He ditched it. I'll do that soon. I comb my hair the opposite way that I usually do. Okay, here we go. I'll tell you what, man, that cop must have thought we were totally crazy. He laid a hand Yeah, that was cool. There was like a black brigade, you know. Like, they were very inclusive, the monkeys, you know. 
Au contraire. Au contraire. Is that what he said? He's crazy. He's crazy. They're all crazy. Au contraire means on the contrary, which didn't have anything to do with what Davy said. Now, oh, here, this is cool. And this bathroom set is really nice. It's it's going to come up in interesting ways. Oh, look at this. This is great. Strawberry fields forever. That's what he was whistling when he came in. Nod to the Beatles, man. Talk about police brutality. I like how it's just a little tiny piece. You all right? <laughs> well, let me tell you one thing, son. Nobody ever lends money to a man with a sense of humor. Isn't that that's great editing? That's Bob Rafelson. He went on to do Easy Rider, uh, Five Easy Pieces. Oh shit. Oh, man. <laughs> it's like, what the hell is happening here? I like the light changing in the back. This is like a whole, like, castle, like Roger Corman kind of set long hallway oh my god <laughs> and they're milking it up I love, you know that was the thing about the monkeys they, they didn't they knew how to just ham it you know and just milk it and like they didn't they weren't winking all the time they were just sometimes they would just get into it just go hey let's sell this you know and it's just a dumb little sequence, but, you know. <laughs> oh, wow. A little like a sure midget greenie. Ah! Mickey Dolenz. He was sort of... It's weird that they all had their own thing. Davey was the heartthrob with the eyes glowing every time a girl would come out. Mickey was the goofball, but he was kind of the face and the voice, really. Because of Clarksville, last train to Clarksville, and I'm a believer, that was Mickey. So you always know, that's the monkeys. And he had that face and that silliness. And then Mike no, Nesmith right here wanted to be sort of the leader. Sort of, sorry, sort of did become the leader when they actually were turning into a band. He wasn't in the show, yeah. really, although he was cast we sort of that way. Times, good officer, sir. Yeah. Anyway, uh, we last saw him inside that was cool job. how that thing uh, rotated. I just all talked right, all over that. <laughs> but if I get any more trouble out of you, that's it for everybody. Sir, what about Davy? We'll find him, don't worry. Now, out! This is funny. It flushed. <laughs> so it has that sound of TV, 70s cop shows. Look at this. <laughs> That's right. Then the watch out. Oh, wrong side. <laughs> Funny. Oh, here we go. Watch. Look at that. I just saw the mark in the corner. Like the guitar. It's 
gonna be another one, watch. Right over here. Oh no, it must have passed already. The cop's dream. His dream is Michael Nesmith waking up. <laughs> he has about the door. <laughs> the bug, the, the, the door. Oh, I'll get it. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm happy to you. are just playing music. I don't care. They're, now, they all seem weird, too, at this point. So is it Mike's dream, the cop's dream? It was the cop's dream. But... We all have loved ones, you know. <laughs> There's Mickey. Peter? He's going to where Davy went. Where are they going? Stop. 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 Mm -hmm. hey, oh, shit. Sure. Right, now now Mickey's on. gone. What are you guys doing? <laughs> what are you guys doing? And this was like the set of the monkeys show, but it's all dark. Oh, they never showed funny. it in the dark, really. It was always lit. This was sort of the okay. dark side of the movies, this movie. Now, dark side of the monkeys, sorry. Tell them how we do it, huh? Okay, Mickey. Man, this telegram is as much for you as it was for me. Uh, come on. You hear the dubbing change. Oh, <laughs> a dummy. That was a hard fall. <laughs> I like these pillows. They're cool. I guess they're like the Mylar balloons that we have now. But they're not balloons, they're just like pillows. It's weird. And now, like psychedelia, we're gonna get this color change. It's a negative, actually. Well, yeah, I'm going to tune out while Mike trips out. <laughs> and we'll chat a little bit more after I come back. But let's let you watch the rest of this without me. back there it was a little bit of head i don't mean to say it that way but you know you got a little bit of head there and uh that was uh that was a scene the reason i chose that part it is in my opinion it's one of the best parts but you know again this is a movie that has all kind of best best parts and uh, one, the reason I picked this one was because there wasn't a lot of music in there. Um, there are monkey songs, copyrighted songs, so I didn't want to put anything that had those songs. All the, and those are, again, like the Beatles. 
really great visuals and the songs are good. It's, a lot of people remember the opening, the porpoise song, when they jump in the in the river or whatever it is, lake, I don't know what it is. And uh, they jump off a bridge, the monkeys, and then they wind up uh, floating around underneath to a lot of porpoises and mermaids and weird shit like that. So it starts off right away with a song. And then, uh, then it merges into other monkeys' songs and bits, and so. And then after this part, there's some really other, really nice monkeys like ballads, and um, uh, uh, really just, and it just gets wild. <laughs> Let's just say that, really just gets out of control. Uh, really, uh, and but again, the theme is that the monkeys, the actors are trying to figure out if they're a rock band, if they're actors, because in a lot of the later scenes, you'll see they're at a movie studio. And there are, you know, and, and there's moments where they're walking through walls, props, and saying, I don't want to do this anymore, you know, like they're tired of the TV show. So I think they were really trying to move the monkeys into movies, but they didn't expect that the show was going to get canceled. And unfortunately, when that happened, the record sales dive bombed um peter tor quit i think he did one more project after this which was considered sort of a sequel in the sense to this movie but it was actually a tv special and the problem that doomed that was it ran against the oscars like in i don't know 1971 maybe 70 i'm not sure even of the year uh but around that time and it ran against the Oscars and, of course, you know, got blown away. Nobody nobody watched it as far as anybody really knows. But there are, thankfully, archives of the show actually broadcast on TV and original tapes of the show, which were edited later uh, for the broadcast. But they had extra stuff on the tapes. And that's uh, thir uh, 33 Revolutions Per Monkey television special that came out after head and that was it for peter torque he left he he went goodbye he was done with it he he had things he had some other issues but you know every monkey sort of had certain weird issues um but that's you know you can look all that up <laughs> i don't want to go into it because uh, part of those issues involve my life to be honest with you <laughs> Well, you and I travel to the beat of a different drum. Can't you tell by the way I run? Yeah, that was Mike Nesmith. Uh, and Linda Ronstadt made it, and the Stone Ponies. Linda Ronstadt and the Stone Ponies made it the hit that it was. And the Stone Ponies were made up of, guess what, members of the Eagles. It's funny how all this rock and roll just rolls and rocks around, man. <laughs> But that's it, man. That was head, and that's one of that's I, I I for this show I call it the best part. But you know, it, it's up to everybody to pick the best part. And for me, the main reason I picked this as the best part was because it was very much like the TV show, and also it didn't have monkeys music that was copyrighted, and it also I think uh, sh highlighted a lot of great filmmaking by uh, Bob Rafelson, who, again, did Easy Rider, Five Easy Pieces. He was sort of a real uh, progenitor. Uh, is that a word? <laughs> I don't even know. Uh, but he was uh, someone who promoted sort of uh, new, uh, new wave kind of filmmaking, uh, on the fly, but somewhat scripted, you know. Um, Reality TV is owes a lot, I think, in many ways to the Monkees TV show because a lot of the stuff they did was improv on camera and they left it in. But, you know, that's a horse of a different color, as they say. So, let's just say... Good night. And we'll see you sometime and... Don't forget to click the link below for the full movie. And then lastly, 
I want to thank you. And I especially want to say happy birthday to my niece, Melanie. Happy birthday to you. I can't play it. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear. Happy birthday to you. I lost my pick. <laughs> it dropped down there. 